Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna talk about Launch School's approach to learning, what they call their pedagogy. Now, that's a pretty big word for anyone that doesn't use it as part of their normal vernacular. And it required me to look it up just to make sure I knew what I was saying while I was speaking to you guys. So I looked it up and it says that pedagogy is a noun, the method and practice of learning, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. Wow. That's a mouthful, but you know that it's gonna be an important part of what we're gonna discuss in today's video about Launch School's pedagogy. What does this mean when it talks about learning and a curriculum? Well, I actually reached out to some of the administration at Launch School just to make sure they were okay with me talking about some of what they wrote in their article on their site about their pedagogy, about this very subject. And I was interested in talking about this because I feel like their pedagogy or their approach to learning is something that can and should be applied to many, many other subjects, both in mental types of skills as well as physical types of skills. In fact, when I went through and read about their approach to learning, I couldn't help but think is so directly applicable to so many physical skills people try to learn in sports and especially highly skilled physical practices like the martial arts or any highly skilled subset of a sporting activity. You think about anything like any type of complex sport that requires a long term dedication to learning the skill and the way that they break down learning for launch school really will apply to that. So I challenge you to, as I'm talking about this, think about all the places in your life you could apply this type of approach to learning a skill. And I think you're gonna find that many examples come to mind. So real quick, as we get into their approach to learning, I just wanna read a quote right from the site. They say, first, it should be pointed out that our singular goal at launch school is to push people to launch new careers at the best companies possible. Importantly and counterintuitively, it's not about jobs at all. Launching a career requires a far more long-term mindset and a much more thorough training process. You have to be willing to learn for years instead of months. So I think that's really interesting because there are a lot of skills that people want to learn and they know intuitively that they're very difficult skills that should take a long time to learn. Yet, because you know, for people it's really hard to think very long-term and be able to really conceptualize what a long-term dedication to anything is going to feel like, we tend to want to rush the, the process, the process of learning regardless of what it is. And the example that comes to mind for me is if anyone's taken a martial art or done any boxing or you know something like jujitsu or wrestling, where it's a skill that you're really, for most people, not just going to be able to power through and learn immediately. And of course, there are certain freak athletes that will be able to power through and learn any skill immediately. And of course there are, you know, freak engineers that will be able to power through and just understand all software engineering really quickly. But for the rest of us, we have to take this long-term approach where we flip through a number of different types of learning and different structures for how we're learning that allow us to continue that process without getting burned out without losing motivation and while continuing to make progress that we can track and really relate to on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. And I think that's important because it's so critical to be able to maintain that motivation over the long term. Again, when you're measuring your time studying in years, not just months or weeks. So what I like is that in launch school, they, they talk about how they approach uh, this learning software engineering. And again, you're gonna see right now, this is immediately applicable to any skill. And they talk about their three phases of learning. And the first phase they talk about uh, as the exploration phase. This is where someone is exploring a new skill and they need to be able to cover the whole breadth of the skill to understand basically what they're getting themselves into. At this phase, the person also needs to maintain motivation. So if they dig down too deep into any one of the sub sets within this skill, they're gonna burn out really quickly and lose motivation because they haven't really even grasped what the whole skill set is about. So this, for example, you can think of if someone came to a new game, if they went and they were gonna watch a game of baseball and then try it out, you'd wanna figure out as quickly as possible how to get the person in the game, hitting the ball, you know, trying to swing at it, trying to pitch, running around the bases. You wouldn't take someone and show them a game of baseball and then have them practice pitching for three months and then you know, learn how to perfect their swing for six months and then learn how to do a sprint start so they could get around the bases and you know, learn how to slide into a base for another six weeks. You wouldn't do that because you want the person to maintain that excitement for the game. The only people who are gonna go off and learn all those sub skills to become a professional athlete, a professional baseball player, are people who put years and years and years in or at least weeks to master the basics of the game 
where they can now say, okay, to keep progressing, I need to now put in some serious time on all these sub skills and really build up that repertoire of skills to become a better baseball player. But at first, you'd want them to just explore the game, just figure it out, try to hit the ball, try to run around the bases. You just want them to understand the game. And that's what they talk about in the exploration phase. They talk about how in this phase, it can last you know, any number of, uh, you know, any amount of time. This could last weeks, for someone who you know jumps in, checks something out, and is ready to get serious, or it could last years. So now tying this back to engineering, this is the person who's flipping through different courses. You know, they're trying to figure out should they learn JavaScript, should they learn Python, should I learn Ruby? Do I want to even you know focus on software engineering? Do I want to focus on data science? These are the people who are flipping through all these online courses. A lot of people watching this video and they're not sure what they want to do. The important thing about this phase is that you don't rush it. If you're not ready to get serious about studying, don't try to get serious about studying, you know? Just like with the baseball player. If you're not sure you want to play baseball, don't go and practice swings for eight weeks straight. It just doesn't make sense. So in the exploration phase, the important thing is grasping the skill set from a top-down level, understanding what you're getting yourself into so that when it is time to really buckle down and study and get serious, you can maintain that motivation because you know what it is you're going for you know how to play baseball. So hopefully that makes sense and I didn't confuse you with the sports analogy, I'm gonna continue it. So if you're already confused, you might wanna watch the whole first part of the video again. So moving on from the explorer phase, we're now in what launch school terms the serious student phase. So going back to our baseball analogy, this is the person who's played the whole game a few times, they understand what it's about, you know, maybe they even been in a little league for a year and now they wanna get better at the game. So they wanna start practicing and actually improving their skill as a baseball player. For the person who's a software engineer, this is someone who's been through all these, you know, four week online courses. They've maybe been through a couple tracks at Code Academy. They've maybe even tried a boot camp for 12 weeks that didn't really get them the result they wanted. And now they're thinking, you know, I'm really ready to put everything in to become a professional software engineer and get that job at a real, high-end engineering company. This is when someone has to become what they term a serious student, where you move from a top-down approach to learning, where you're learning the whole subject, to a bottom-up approach, when you're breaking all the subsets of skills down into their individual components, and you're really digging in to get mastery of that sub-skill within the overall skill of software engineering. So this is why in launch school, the majority of the core curriculum is focused on really mastering different individual topics within software engineering. You know, in other videos on this channel, you'll see me talk about some of those subsets of skills within software engineering that different parts of the core curriculum cover. These are things like networking, databases, uh, object-oriented programming. You know, there's a little bit of functional programming. All these different subsets of skills within the larger skill of software engineering that you have to reach a high level of proficiency in in order to become a real professional software engineer. So during this serious student phase, you're gonna go through and do what's termed bottom up approach to learning, where you're breaking out all these sub skills within software engineering, you're drilling down into each individual one to reach a high level of proficiency so that you can eventually put them all back together. Now throughout the course in launch school, there are various times where you put these skills together briefly to build different projects, things like different uh, versions of an application or a, uh, different functionalities within an application. But overall, the focus is on mastery of those individual skills so that you're prepared to put them together. The place that you ultimately put these skills together, launch school terms the professional phase of learning. Now going back to our baseball analogy, this would be someone who's been playing the game, they've been working on all these skills, and now they're trying to reach that high level as a player. This could be someone who, you know, graduates from Little League and they're not playing in high school and they're trying to get that, uh, you know, career in college. They're trying to get a scholarship to go play in college. They're trying to get that contract to go play in AAA baseball. They're trying to get that contract to go play in the pros. This is when it's crunch time and you really need to put all those skills together to be able to do something, you know? So when we go back to software engineering, what we're talking about is really being able to build production level applications, being able to build things that people can go and use. And the first time in the course that you're asked to do that really is in the capstone. In the capstone program, that's their professional engineer phase. And that's when you're being asked to put all those subsets of skills together to act and work like a real professional software engineer with a real team 
to build a real production grade product. And then from that point, you're expected to go carry that on into industry where you're a professional engineer. And of course, you need to return to that phase of a serious student. You know, one thing I didn't mention when we were talking about that is the serious student phase never ends. That's, you know, that sharpening the saw and continuing to refine those skills you have in all those subsets of engineering. So that phase never ends, but as a professional, that's where you're gonna be asked to put all those together. And you can think about this as when you're in a job, your professional level skills are the ones you're gonna to use to really produce value for the company that you're working for. The serious student, that would be something like on the job training or you know continuing education as a software engineer. That's where you're really refining your craft for yourself to be a better engineer. But when you're working for someone, the primary thing you're being asked to do is put all those skills together to be able to create value. And that's that third phase of the learning journey, which is that professional engineer phase. So what I think is really important about this is that you can see this approach to learning going from a top down version of learning at the start of a new skill to a bottom up approach to learning as you're trying to master subsets of skills within that overall skill. And then going back to the top down approach when you've mastered a skill or you're needing to use it, you know, whether that's to create production level applications as an engineer or in a competition as an athlete, when you're being asked to put all those skills together and compete at a high level or work with other people who are working at a high level, again, whether it's sports or in a job setting, that's when you really need to have that top-down approach once again and be able to revisit it as a professional or highly skilled individual. So hopefully you guys can understand how this applies to your journey in learning as a software engineer. Hopefully you can understand how it applies to your journey in learning anything, whether it's a physical, like primarily physical or primarily mental skill. And hopefully you can understand just how you can apply it to different approaches to learn skills that you wanted to learn in your life. So anyway, I'm gonna get more into some of the underpinnings of the whole learning journey you'll have as a student at Launch School, but I wanted to talk about that because it inspired me in many ways, even beyond the world of software engineering when I read it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, comment below letting me know what you thought of this, whether you thought it was really interesting uh, exploration of learning approaches, whether you thought it was just a bunch of nonsense, or whether you wanted me to talk about a different topic in this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so that you're notified anytime that I come out with a new video just like this. And as always, thank you guys for watching.